Before I get started, I want to show you guys the new tripod that I just got. I'm going to try it out for the first time today. It uh, sticks to my window with these little suction cups. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the HVAC Diaries. This episode of the HVAC Diaries is brought to you by New Calgon. How are you guys this week? Did you have a good one? We had, we had an interesting week. We had a nice variety of different types of work. Although it felt like there was lots of like tight spaces. Lots of curling and like crouching over and like... Yeah, it was like small spaces. Anyway, let's tell you all about it. Let's go. Are you ready? Yes, you are. Let's go. I was just trying to decide which story to start with. Like, what's the most interesting story of the week or... But honestly, there's nothing really that interesting. Yeah, maybe they're all kind of interesting. We did a couple things this week that we wouldn't necessarily do. Hmm. Anyway, okay, I'm procrastinating. Let's just get into it. So we did have one water source heat pump unit this week. They called us up, they were like, hey, um, this thing is making a really weird buzzing sound. They actually sent us a video of the sound and we were taking bets on like on the way there. We we're like, oh, it's going to be a, a capacitor. It's just going to be a capacitor. I was pretty confident that it was. But unfortunately, it wasn't. The capacitor was good. Seems fine. And unfortunately, we had to get a new motor. So the guys have just gone to go and grab a new motor. I just grabbed some tools and my coffee, and I'm gonna take the old motor out before, well, by the time they are back with a new motor, I will be ready for it. <laughs> but the way that that thing is situated inside the ceiling space, it's it's the blower itself is right over this built-in shelf so I had to put my ladder right beside it and then work to, like on my left side everything was on my left side and you guys that's not my strong side On these blower motors, on these water source heat pump units, there's a 516 screw holding them in each place, but underneath one of these arms is usually another hidden 516 screw. And uh, she's right in there. It's hard to see because I've got no space, but there she is. And so you have to remove the 38 volt from this holding it in place in order to access that little screw. Super fun. Holy fuck, that's hot. Oh, that's a hot ass motor. Oh my goodness. Holy shit. Okay, let's Can you believe I didn't use any sand cloth or any WD-40 lubricant? Nothing. It just came off so easily. Thank you. 
here. Like this. <clears throat> I love this like internal pep talk. You got this. Yes. We went back to that hosteling place where they have those three uh, display coolers in their shared kitchen. They've been having such issues with one of their coolers. I, again, I think somebody bashed something pretty hard into that thing because it's like, anyway, we've spent, well, they've spent so much money on one of these fridges. I think at the end of the day, it would have been in their best interest just to buy a new one, but they did not want to do that. They were like, no, no, we'll spend the money and we'll fix this one. So we've replaced the door itself, this, the glass sliding door that slides, we've replaced the entire door we replaced the springs on the top and the rollers like that makes the door slide and still the door was still like eh, off kilter. So this time I got this parts breakdown of like every single part in that, that unit. So we got the lower rail, like the guide rail on the bottom of it, and also a whole new rail for the top. So now we're starting completely fresh with a new door, new springs, and a new rail. And this time, finally, when we let the door go, it closed nice and closed properly. So, man, we're just tired of even seeing, looking at that unit. Okay, we're back at this door thing. We have replaced a glass door. We replaced the springs. Today we are replacing this bottom track and the top one, just to make sure. Actually, yeah, it's a little uh, damaged, but it doesn't look busted or anything. Okay. So. Jeez. So this new one has got these little ridges on it. Yeah. I guess that like guides the, the door in. And on this one, the, the ridge is really low. It's like been worn down. So I guess there's no place for the door to be guided by. Well, like I said, so there's just It's just missing two sets of screws to hold it in. Well, I was scratching it down here. You're able to adjust the rollers slightly. So we did that. We were just kind of playing around with their positioning. And finally we got it to work really well. And I cannot believe that I did not get a video of the door closing finally. After all that.
we checked out a system at a wellness clinic that wasn't working. So actually, here's the full story. So the wellness clinic is inside this multi-tenanted building. And they were always in unit number, I don't know, 201. Call it mail, call it 202. So we've always serviced them. Across the hallway there, there was a daycare that was there for a while. And we were doing their service as well. But after a while, and I don't know why, maybe they stopped paying their bills or something. I don't know. There was an issue between them and the landlord. We got instructions from the landlord to stop servicing them. So they were like, don't change their filter. Don't even, don't even go there. And we're like, okay, we can do that for you, but you still own the equipment. So when it dies, you're on the hook. And this is not really the best way to do it. But anyway, we're like, okay, we'll, we'll do the thing that you say. So the wellness clinic has now expanded. They've moved from their unit, what did I say, 202? Cool. Um, and they've expanded into where the daycare was. They've completely renovated it, turned it into this really pretty little clinic. So now they're also in unit 201. So they're like, Beep. there's no air working. <laughs> Nothing's working here. So we're like, well, obviously we haven't changed the filter there in like over a year. Again. Yeah, no worries at all. <laughs> Wow. But anyway, so what we did find was that the blower motor in the furnace there was not starting at all. Luckily for them, it was a bad capacitor, so we got that changed out. Looks a little belly. Yeah, pretty? Oh. No, that's 0.3. What? That's 0.3. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, I'm looking for a, t a 15 microfarad capacitor. You think we have one of those? 35, 40, 25, 30, 80, 7 and a half. So we have a few 7 and a halves. So here's a 10. Shoot, I'm going to have to take a, a 20, I think. Hmm. <laughs> you can hear it's working, but you can't see it. The blower started up right away, so we're like, yes. Unfortunately, though, it's in really, really poor shape. I think we're going to order a motor just to be proactive about it because... We think that day we think that things days are numbered especially with a new capacitor in there now it's like it's going full on now it's like oh, it's probably gonna die so anyway so they're like oh thank you so much however when we started up the cooling that didn't fire up so trevor and i had to go around the back of the building where they've got all their units um they've got this little gate that you open it's locked but it's like the fence on the back there is kind of broken and it's just open to the neighbors so when we walk towards the end of the the building, there's two scrap units there that we couldn't get rid of one time. There was one from before us and then one that belonged to us. We changed a unit there. Anyway, that's a total tangent, long-winded way of saying there's two scrap units in the back of the building there. And when we went back there, one of them was completely stripped. Completely. All the copper completely stripped out of the unit, the coils, even the, the fan motor, the condenser fan motor, stripped completely. Uh, we just found this thing all salvaged. An old unit. I don't know why they took that one and not this one, but look at this. They've stripped the entire freaking motor down too. Every little tiny piece of copper. But they left that? Anyway, we're trying to find the unit that we're working on. Oh, crap. So we've got this single pole contactor here with a shunt on it. Let me see if I can grab my lights. Um, and so right now we just don't have a call from the thermostat. There's no 24 volts on this guy. So um, Trev has just gone back up to look at um, what's holding it back. I think my dad found a limit switch that was open. Um, so hopefully that's the only thing that's holding us back here because of that dirty ass filter. Woo, you guys! We got lift off. Also, we saw damage to another one of the units just beside it. It looks like, I don't know, it looks like somebody's actually just stomped 
on the copper pipes and I think they got lucky because it looks like nothing is actually broken but that's also just a matter of time before something's gonna go wrong with that one. We got called back to that pizza place that we've been doing so much work at lately. I made a joke that we've looked at every single piece of equipment in their store now. This time they called us for their walk-in cooler. This is the first time we're working on that one. With that? It's not frozen or anything like that. Hmm. So we we arrive there, the cooler's just not working at all. At all. So uh, we do some checks and it turns out that their condenser coil is just so clogged with flour, flour dust. It's like solidified flour. It's, it's uh, formed little chunks on the inside of the coil. Oh. Also, to me, the condenser fan motor didn't sound very healthy at all. Like, I think that thing's going to die pretty soon. So I grabbed the model and serial number just so that we can be proactive about that too. We can order a motor or even have one... Not maybe ordered, but we know the price and availability of it if we need it. Anyway, so Trev got out the nitrogen and we nitrogen that thing like really clean. There was dust everywhere. Luckily, we got there before their store opened. So we kind of told them that we're like, we're, we're going to be, it's going to be pretty messy here, dusty. And they're like, no, no, that's fine. Everything is covered. Nothing is kind of opened yet. So do what you have to do. And man, that was tough. Also because of the where it was, it's on top of the cooler room and in between like the ceiling tiles. So you gotta kind of like shimmy your way in there. Anyway, covered in dust. This thing is emitting so much heat. Sounds like the fan is struggling as well. We're not quite finished yet, but Trev is covered. Holy shit. Mm. Gross, grossy, 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 gross, 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 gross. That came out of this coil. Unreal. Let's see if we've moved it all. Oh, the tiniest bit. Oh, that moved more. Moved yeah, it moved more. <laughs> Keep going, baby. <laughs> Blowing well, cold. Sure is. It's also falling hard. Yeah, like most it of sure the places. Sure is. <laughs> <laughs> Our Trevor and I are both covered in flower dust. Oh, it doesn't even look that bad. I cleaned up. You played up? <laughs> I did not. The rugs. Grousey, grousey. Every time we work here, these people give us the most beautiful pizza. 
It's a little early, but we're gonna have pizza for breakfast. But I think we've worked on every single piece of equipment in their shop now. Their prep cooler, their beverage cooler, their walk-in cooler today, their the freezer, business. but not their AC not yet. yet, not their A-track. Although we did see that they're... Stay tuned. Yeah, we did see that those thermostats were dead, so we're probably gonna be a cold bag. Anyway, yes. We had another job where we had to shimmy a little bit. This one was an interesting one. We got a call from a guy who was like, hey, I just bought this cooler room from this company. Can you come and can you meet me there and help me decommission it so I can remove it from their place and take it to my own place? So we're like, yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> so we get there and the room is completely empty. Everything is kind of ready for us. Let's see what we have here. All right, so this uh, cooler room, this walk-in cooler is being decommissioned. And we are here to remove all the refrigerant so they can disassemble this room. I know we're not there. Oh, it's like a disco party in here. All right, settle down, girl. We just had to go onto the top there, recover all of the refrigerant, cut the refrigerant lines, Disconnect the electrical from the uh, condensing unit, disconnect electrical from the indoor unit, cut the, the drain line, and then we dismounted, dismounted, unmounted. We unmounted the indoor unit and we got the condensing unit off the roof. Everything is nicely packed into his truck and it's going to be his deal to deal with the walls and the ceiling of this room. I don't know how he's going to do that, if he's going to disassemble those as well and take them with him, not really sure. But the refrigerant side of that job is done. this one too and then we'll just pull from Triple. All right, so now that's everything disconnected. Electrical is disconnected. Awesome. Just watch the film. Yeah. Oh, you guys look bad. Okay. Okay. You got it? Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, all good. We did one job this week that is completely out of the ordinary for us. We installed and replaced um, extractor fans in a residence. So it's actually a condo and it's on top of the liquor store that we service. And in order to service the liquor store's HVAC we have to go through the condo because it's in their attic space 
so we do the, the condo as well so the owner of this place the landlord he's like please can you install some extractor fans there's one in the kitchen and then the one in the bathroom is very lazy can you replace that one as well so we did a little bit of work in the attic which is not our scene at all it's <laughs> i think kind of awkward for us to be in there um not quite working in attic spaces very often but we got it done trevor did such a good job i was really nervous like you only get one shot at it because you're literally cutting a hole in their ceiling in the drywall and so when the when the saw goes through like the first time i'm just like mm. but it was perfect. It, he, Trevor did such a great job, and I'm so pleased with how they both turned out. Trevor's got some boxes of tricks. Boxes of tricks is... Not my tricks. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been asked to install a an extractor fan in this, in the kitchen downstairs. So we're just scoping things out here upstairs to see what's gonna come out. Look at Trevor's positioning right now. Don't move. This position is hilarious. You're hilarious. <laughs> Why are you gonna get me when I'm vulnerable? Because <laughs> you always get me. Yeah, that's the kitchen hood right here. So do you think there, you saw two there and maybe two here, or two here and two there? Well, or they should be two in a in a line, yeah. or four in a line, sorry. Yeah, sure. Is that something we can put on after the fact? Not yet. What is the electrical like? Oh, it's just your little three wire. Amazing. It looks like they... And because we did the kitchen fan, they also asked us to replace the bathroom fan as well which is a little bit different to the one that we have, the replacement fan, so we're gonna have to make some changes. It's not something we typically do, but we're gonna get her done. smudges here on this wall. We've made a big mess. It's beautiful. It's like we were never here. So slow. Alright, that's higher speed. There she goes. It's so quiet. 
Let's get this little tricky guy back in there. <laughs> One-handed, because I gotta film everything. Where is it? Okay, but I, I gotta do this two hands. <laughs> and from the top, here's our kitchen. And here is our bathroom. Beautiful. So at the end of last week's vlog, I told you guys that I was doing something very exciting and very stressful. And so what that was, was on Tuesday morning, I was invited to speak on a panel at the HREI annual conference. And I should have said somebody, hey. Which they do in a city around Canada every year. And this year, it just happened to be in, in Vancouver. So they asked me to speak. Um, I was on the panel about workforce development. And I gave a little speech about that from the perspective of being an apprentice, um, using social media as a, as a platform and like a, as a way to promote the industry. And yeah, I think it went really well. Although I will say if, you know, just between us, I kind of wish that I didn't prepare something because I felt like I had to read to get all of my points out. And I think if I had just spoken from the heart instead of preparing something, I think, I think it would have been a lot more natural and better. But I was really nervous about the crowd. Like, these people come from all over Canada, and they're pretty big names in the HVAC industry. Most of the, the people are, like, in suits and dresses. And, um, yeah, it's not really my usual crowd. So I kind of I overthought it, um, overprepared. But I think in general, it, it went really well. And I was just so thankful and grateful for the opportunity to speak on that stage in front of those people. And uh, the type of people that I met, oh my goodness. The moderator for our panel was Tara Smith. And Tara just happens to be the chairperson of HREI at this moment. So she is a huge inspiration to me as a woman in the HVACR industry. So she's definitely somebody that I aspire to be like, and it was an honor to meet with her or to meet her and to be on this panel with her. You guys, it's so fancy in here. The hotel is stunning. That's where I'll be sitting. Hey guys, <laughs> I've been a, a bit away from my phone today, um, but I didn't get a single video or picture of me up on that stage this morning. I was going to ask somebody to take my phone or even take a couple of pictures, but it was a little bit crazy this morning, so I didn't have that opportunity. So hopefully somebody took a picture or something and they'll send it to me, but... I also had one of our fellow Women in HVAC Our Canada ladies come out from Ontario. She is actually on the board of HREI, so she was there for the conference. Um, and yeah, we were there in our pink shirts together, and it was really awesome. All right, guys, well, that's all the adventures I have for you this week on the HVAC Diaries HVAC Vlog. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I already look forward to seeing you guys next week. I hope you have a great one. Bye! <laughs> okay, forget about the hair. Forget it. Okay. How are you guys this week? <laughs> Things that we do here, we're usually always used. Okay.
cool. Let's start that again. We've replaced the springs and the rollers to make the... That car's so loud. I have to start that again. Damn it. And then located, we got the lower um, rail, the rail, the guard rail. <laughs> guard rail? It's just a rail. Guide. Guide. Guide rail. Okay. Annual conference um, in some city in Bank... No. But I think in general, I think it was a very, it was a well, <laughs> one, oh my goodness, <laughs> happens to be the chairman, chairperson, oh my goodness, 